Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I have a little bit of news. I have been working through the serendipity quilt along and I was getting up to release three and I, I'm gonna be honest I just wasn't finding the motivation to work on it. And a lot of times in the past I would just power through and do it anyway but I have decided just to let this project go. Um, I'm not feeling inspired to work on it and I just, I, I have been a little bit frustrated with how my last two strips turned out. Um, they just weren't fitting together right and different things getting in the way. So I'm just going to let it go. Um, if you are doing this quilt along, um, I'm actually going to save these because I may come back to it later, maybe try different fabrics or something like that. So I am going to save them, but if you are working on it, make sure that you go to the um, Make-A-Wish link and give a donation if you're able to, because it is for a really good cause. It is part of the reason I was really trying to work through it, but um, right now I'm just, you know, it's not one that I'm feeling. So it's something that I'll probably circle back to later, but right now I'm just going to let it go and work on stuff that is bringing me more joy to work on. Um, one thing about this block that was kind of fun to me was that it had the Courthouse Steps foundation paper. Um, I actually have that paper, so I was like, oh, I can finally give it a try and use it. I have a reason to now. Um, but like I said, I just wasn't getting the motivation to use it. So what I think I'm going to do instead is I absolutely love this fabric line. I have a ton of fabric left over from doing the, um, table runner project I did. If you don't know, it is Riley Blake Designs um, Gingham Gardens, and it is lovely. I really love this fabric line. It goes together beautifully. So I think what I'm going to do is um, just do a review on this uh, foundation paper because I have not used it before. Um, and I thought, why not give it a try, right? I have a lot of sp scrap fabric here that I think will look lovely on it. So that is what I'm going to do instead. So... Let's check out this paper. What do you think? Okay, so I finished one block and I have to say it is so cute. The points are perfect, very straight lines. It is lovely. Now, here are my thoughts on the foundation paper. So I think it works really well. And I think if, um, you know, if you're maybe new to quilting, struggle with cutting, anything like that, it might be a really great purchase for you to use. But I think um, that it kind of takes a lot of work to set this up. And I think the tearing the paper from the back was kind of frustrating. Um, you can't really easily chain piece and do a whole bunch at one time. So if you've been sewing for a long time, it's going to cost you extra money to do these because it is handy that it shows you in here what size quilt you're going to, um, for what size quilt you're going to make, how many you'll need to purchase of these. And you get 42 sheets per pad. So even for, um, like a crib quilt that is a 36 and a half inch square, you can use one of these packs. You'll get 36 blocks. But if you go up to even a lap quilt, you're gonna have to buy two of these because you're gonna need 80 of these blocks. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. It It is gonna cost you a lot of money. Now, what I think these would be fun for, um, you know, if you have a honey bun on hand, they're already cut down to the one and a half inch strips for you, so it wouldn't be a lot in that sense. Or if you're gonna use scraps, sure, this would be a lot of fun because you're gonna be able to use up all the scraps you have laying around, but I don't know. I think it's a lot of steps. I really like you know the creative grids better than this because you don't have to rip away all the paper. You don't have to do all the folding. Um, and stuff like that. So that's just my thoughts. I am going to continue using this set that I got in one of my um, um, subscription boxes because I already have them. So I'm going to finish this and it is really, really beautiful block. Um, that's just my thoughts on it that you're going to end up spending 
a lot of extra money to make a quilt for a one-time use product. When, if you um, are interested in the creative grid sets or something like that, that kind of makes piecing this type of block a little bit easier. It's a one-time purchase for that. So just my thoughts. Now, with that said, I came up with a way that I think I'm gonna be able to put this little quilt together um, a little more quickly. Um, I love the way this block what looks with just some different pinks in it and then my background cream color with words on it. So I divided my layer cake into kind of different color schemes. So I have some yellows that I'll put together, some other floral creams that I think will go maybe okay with um, my other cream background. I'm going to kind of use those last and see if I need them or not, we'll see. But um, so I have those and then I have some greens and some blues and I already started with the pinks. So um, I have those already cut up. So what I'm going to do is I have all the pieces for each block already divided up. So I have my, make sure that you're seeing what I'm doing. So I have my, um, everything all laid out. Now my cornerstones on each one are going to be these, or not cornerstones, but my center block on each one are going to be these. And it, the instructions inform you to glue it right side up on the back of the paper in the center. So I'm going to move all these to the side and kind of show you what I did to get set up. So on the back of the paper, I just used some regular old school glue to glue, glue this down. So I just put a little bit of glue on the one, on the one, and on the one. And then I put it in place. So I easier in my better light over there. So I just kind of centered it over and pressed it down. So this is just following the instructions that are in the, the paperwork here. Um, I know there are videos on this and everything. Um, on the, I think it's on the Fat Quarter Shops youtube channel but i just followed these instructions here and the cutting instructions it was super easy to follow so have those in place and then what it says to do is fold <coughs> excuse me fold along the line between one and two so i just folded it up and crease there and and then it says trim away any excess from the crease if you have more than a quarter of an inch. I didn't, so I didn't bother folding it away. Um, so then I got my next two blocks that are background because those are my twos. And you just kind of put it in place there. And I couldn't figure out how to keep it in place and sew. So I put a little pin as far away from where I'm sewing as possible, just kind of hold it in place. And what you'll do is is sew across that pin, that um, creased line that we did. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the number two folded on all of these because my plan is just to sit at the sewing machine and get these three done all together, do each step as I go on each one. Okay. So that in place. Fold between one and two. And I'm trying to get my words all going in the same direction on each side. All right, there we go. So I'm just gonna go sew between one and two on each one of these. 
make sure I have them in the same. So I'll sew between one and two on each one of these and then press it open and then I'll fold along one and three on each paper and put the next one in place and do the same thing.
Okay, so I got these three more done. And we're almost to the finish line. So all we have to do now is trim them to size and then pull off the, um, tear off the paper. So to trim, all I did was line up on the correct line. Like it'll tell you, do not trim this line, trim this line. So I lined it up, um, lining up the six and a half inch marker on my ruler on the line that we're to be cutting. So I get that lined up. And looks like we're good. So I line it up so that I can cut off two sides at once, just because I think that's easier. <laughs> Okay, and then we have this side to do. And I'll do the rest, the other few later. I'm just gonna finish off this one. And good. Okay, so here is how our block is looking. Super cute. And so I think this is like one of the most <laughs> annoying parts is tearing off the paper. Now the instructions do say to bring your stitch um, length down small so that this part's a little bit easier. And I did do that. So I can't tell you if you forget to um, lower your stitch length if it does take, if it is harder or not because I, um, haven't tried, but I don't think it's hard doing this part. I just think it's an extra step and you end up with all this waste paper and everything. But I do think with that said, like I'm, I'm not saying that I don't like this foundation piecing paper. I think it serves its purpose. Your, the blocks turn out really beautiful doing it this way. They line up perfectly. Um, so they, they definitely work really well, right? Like the instructions are very easy to follow. It's just whether or not you want to pay the extra money to use these rather than either using just a pattern and cutting these to size, these strips to size, or using something like the creative grids, which is um, something that's reusable that you can use over and over rather than a one-time use um, pad of paper. So I think they definitely work really well. I mean, look at how lovely the block is, right? It's super cute. They turn out perfect. So it's just whether or not you want to spend the extra money to use them or not. So, and I, okay, I have to show you this. Um, look at how I <laughs> randomly got those pluses all lined up perfectly in there. Five. Definitely did not try to do that. It just randomly happened. <laughs> ah, how fun is that? Okay, so my final thoughts on this paper if you have the extra money, want to give them a try, struggle with lining up courthouse steps and, you know, it's something that you want to explore um, getting your blocks a little more perfect, then purchase them if you have the extra funds. Um, if you don't want to have all the wasted paper of a one-time use product, then check out Creative Grids because they have um, some templates that will help you do this just as easy. So that's, that's my thoughts on it. So until next time, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye.